creating cosmos out of chaos. Shinimurti, thank you so much for for taking the time today to sit with us. You know, it is a great honor for us to be able to have a conversation with you today because to us you have actually played a huge role through our personal practice, especially during these very interesting destructive times that we're in. So so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for it's that. It's a great joy to be with you both, and I appreciate your sincerity and the uh, trajectory of your own spiritual growth and your, your courage in uh, striking out at a new level. And so I wanted to support that because we need to disseminate truth at this time because there is so much disinformation in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can get spiritual truth out, not just political truth and uh, the kind of, of awakening uh, at a partial level that most people are experiencing, which just creates fear, yeah. but to have the total awakening that brings bliss, mm -hmm. then that's, uh, that's a great blessing for everyone. It truly is. Thank you. I think um, for us, this new stage, this, this podcast vehicle, Stars and Destruct, um, it's something we felt a really um, a deep a deep need spiritually to deliver. Um, it became almost like an obsession in a way that we knew that taking the work that we've done on our mats internally and um, bringing it to challenge and question the external world in a public forum, um, it's been something we feel almost as if we've been called to do. Whenever we've dabbled in that area we get a lot of you guys are yogis teach asana stay in your lane <laughs> and it's it's challenging but also you know it's water on a duck's back at the same mm -hmm. time um but you know i think a really interesting starting point um for us because we've witnessed you bringing the external circumstances of this era mm -hmm. into a spiritual practice mm -hmm. and Maybe and bringing the spiritual wisdom into the external world as well and how to cope with it. And that's such an interesting interconnection that we don't see a lot of spiritual teachers doing in this modern day. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. what do you think the role and the importance is of both of those sides? Extremely important. And by the way, to comment on your first statement that you're a yogi, you should stay on the <laughs> mat. Uh, perhaps Hatha yogis, but even the, the real Hatha yogis don't just do that. Iyengar and others, Krishnamacharya, uh, have always uh, uh, expressed the philosophy of yoga, which goes back thousands of years, and, uh, and encompasses the understanding of the flow of time and of the kind of situations that the world would eventually enter, end up in, including this one, which is Kali Yuga and the end of Kali Yuga and what that would bring, and uh, have always uh, understood that the world is Maya. It, it's an illusion, a simulation in modern terms, hmm. uh, and, uh, and that the real is transcendent but that the function of yoga is to unite the real with maya to bring that power of Brahman or Shiva into this plane in order to be able to revive life at the end when the souls are all exhausted and corrupted and impure and to be able to create the energy that will bring about a new world, a new Satyuga, a new kingdom of heaven. And this is the moment in which that has to happen. It's the last margin of opportunity in which there is still enough freedom and still enough clarity in the minds of people who, who have been dumbed down and have been yes. turned into herd mm -hmm. psychotic mm -hmm. mentalities yes. and and to uh, to be able to awaken us uh, us souls who are children of God to the opportunity that this is the blessing that this really is hidden mm -hmm. in the darkness and uh, the duty the responsibility we have to the Dharma to bring the truth of non-duality mm -hmm. into this chaotic multiplicity. And you speak of Kali Yuga, and I think for everybody watching this and listening yeah. to this right now, a lot of people may not even know, what is uh -huh. Kali Yuga? Can you explain? Yes. Like, what is this time? 
Okay. In uh, the classical uh, yogic understanding, but also in the Western, classical Greek understanding. In fact, throughout the whole world, uh, in the what's called the Axial Age, thousands of years ago, it was understood that time is circular. And time is uh, divided into different yugas four main yugas, which are like eras or epochs. And, and these historical periods have an entropic relationship to one another. So we begin with what they usually refer to as the full moon, the 16 full degrees in which everyone is an avatar. Every inhabitant of the world is in God consciousness with all the siddhis, all the, the powers and the, the capacities that mm -hmm. that brings. And then gradually there is a fall. Mm -hmm. And, and there we go from a golden age to a silver age. And, but the silver age is still a one in which everyone has soul consciousness, if not God consciousness. But then there is a fall from that and we enter a copper age. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a destruction. The world in the golden age is one uh, continent, Pangaea, they call it. And then at this point of destruction, it splits into the seven continents uh, that we have now. And seven is not an accident either, as hmm. perhaps we can talk about, because that's a very important magical number yeah. uh, in yoga. But in the Copper Age, there are fewer beings who are able to sustain that vibrational frequency of true divine presence. And so there's a gradual fall, but there are still higher civilizations. We have only the relics of a few of them now, like the pyramids of Egypt right. And, right. and those kinds of, uh, of temples and megaliths and Stonehenge, those things. But we don't know really what they symbolized and how, how the people lived. And then we entered Kali Yuga. Mm -hmm. And this is called the Dark Age, the Iron Age. Uh, it's the, the age in which uh, we, we are now in ego consciousness for the first time, no longer even in soul consciousness. The ego is a derivative of the soul. And the ego for the first time is consciousness identified with the material body. Before mm -hmm. that, consciousness was always at a soul level and transcendent and connected to angels and to higher beings and, and, and to have the power to shift into different levels and frequencies of consciousness. But once we entered Kali Yuga, we lost that power and the ego, because of its identification with the mortal body, mm -hmm. came the fear of death. Hmm. and the fear of pain and of aging and all of that and, and the loss of the sense of being at home in the world, mm -hmm. right? right? And then as Kali Yuga continued over thousands of years, uh, and it started with a number of prophets who came in those early days to give us the awakening. That's when yoga began and that's when uh, Buddha came shortly after that and, and the Mahavira and various others. And you all also had uh, the uh, awakening of the Greeks and the Persians, Zoroaster, Zarathustra, and the Taoists in China. Mm -hmm. So you had uh, still an awakening, but then that gradually became lost and the, uh, the, the cultures began to become more aggressive, uh, and more warlike, and uh, more uh, selfish, greedy, envious, uh, and more fearful. Mm -hmm. and, and less and less intelligent and less right. and less coherent until we now have reached this point in, at the end of Kali Yuga where, where we have such a dumbed down population that people cannot even recognize what is going on. There's a mass die off, there's genocide mm -hmm. happening, there are yeah. incredible things but most people are in denial of them because they, they can't handle the truth. You mm -hmm. see, that's the main thing of the ego. It prefers ignorance to knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, we're at a time when very few people are willing to know everything that we need to know in order to change the situation for the better. So we're at the, at the end of that period where almost all, even egos, let, let alone souls, are exhausted. Right. And, and they, they have no more creativity, which is why you see there's a death of culture. There's very little 
little music, drama, mm -hmm. uh, any of the arts, they, they have all fallen. Even the cinema, the last art, is now mostly very trashy yes. uh, kind yes. of uh, yeah. material. And, uh, and there's uh, a loss of all moral values, uh, all of the traditional uh, ways that society was able to sustain itself with divine masculine and feminine energies mm -hmm. that are all lost now in transgenderism and all of that. And, and so people are so confused and they have no more values and they, they feel so cynical. Uh, and so depressed and, and so nihilistic mm -hmm. right. uh, that there is, they are actually captured by what we call the lower death drive, which is a drive in the ego that wants to die. When it can't handle uh, life and, and, and sustain its happiness, which it no longer can, even right. with drugs or whatever yeah. else they, they want, they, they want to get out. And so there's a massive epidemic of suicide in the world today. I don't know if you're aware. Yes. And it's rising. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. and and violence mm -hmm. and and every other kind of perversion and of uh, antisocial behavior, and the world is now run by psychopaths. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are creating ever more monstrous tyrannies, dictatorships, and uh, bringing about global destruction, mm -hmm. which we can see before our eyes. Yes. So that's what the end of Kali Yuga is. <laughs> wow. But the blessing is this. At the end, because it is so terrible, people are beginning to awaken, mm -hmm. which they wouldn't otherwise. They would just go into their, you know, virtual realities and become happy slaves, you know, right. yeah. of the system. But they, they're not even able to do that. So there is a massive awakening, and you are part of that, mm -hmm. and you are awakening others, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it's very good karma, and <laughs> it will help your own vibrational frequency because you receive great that divine intelligence that is responsible for all of this is also more and more visible, more perceptible by those who turn to God or Brahman or the Buddha mind, however you want to refer to that ultimate reality. It's more accessible now. And so people are able to rise in a very short time to mm. the state of Jivan Mukti or liberation in life and be able to return the world to that vibrational yeah. frequency. So this is the moment in which everything is polarized, the darkest yeah. of the dark, but also right. the brightest light is yeah. now available to those who want it. And so it's a beautiful, auspicious moment. So they call the end of Kali Yuga a fifth yuga. It's a secret yuga that is referred to by the Kumbha Melas, you know, the great gatherings of the yogis. Mm -hmm. This is the Kumbha Mela at the end of time, when all of those who had been yogis or avatars and past lives and lost that right. return to that awakening and, and their own illumination again and return to God consciousness. And yeah. so this is often called uh, the confluence age mm -hmm. or Sangam Yuga, the, the, the bringing together of all the rivers, the holy rivers of life that were the, the founders of religions and of, of yogic lineages and all of the souls who have fallen, who now have a, a yearning to rise again, they are lifted up by divine grace. Wow. So this is a moment when we are going to see wonders of a very miraculous and beautiful kind along with the worst horrors. Right. Right. And, and, and it's a paradox. Well, you mentioned something about grace being behind this yes. darkness. So you're saying that God consciousness is creating this destruction. Indirectly, let's put mm -hmm. it this way, the egos are creating it. Mm -hmm. It's a fallen state, but God gives every being free will, and we have misused our free will and chosen to fall into lower forms of enjoyment and cut ourselves off from God mm -hmm. and from the Dharma, the mm -hmm. values that would sustain society. So in our free will, we have violated the laws of God. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, God is innocent of it because right. he gives us that free will and we've misused our freedom. But because we still have freedom to return to God and to let go of the ego, but we have to be willing to go through ego death in order to do that, God's grace is there and, and is, is lifting us up. And it brings with that wisdom. 
it, 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 what we will all gain from this is the realization that we must stay in God consciousness mm -hmm. in order to sustain the world. So the next cycle of time, we will have that wisdom gained that will enable us to prolong that heavenly period b before there would be another fall. And there's a, there, there's a learning. This The world is a wisdom school, and we are all gaining wisdom, and some will graduate from the mm -hmm. school and, and be done with this level of reality and go on to a more cosmic level of reality. Do you think that everybody has the ability to graduate? Like, is, what, what does it take out of, out of the, on an individual level for, for one to, to graduate into that God consciousness? Well, the problem is you have to want to. Mm, that's, <laughs> Very that's few people first, want to yeah. or yeah. even think it's possible right. or even imagine it. Most people are atheists altogether yeah. and they don't think there is anything beyond the ego. Mm -hmm. And the current ideology is materialism, Darwinism, uh, consumerism. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and even the most intellectual people today are usually believers in psychoanalysis, which says the limit of consciousness mm -hmm. is the ego and anything beyond that is a fantasy. It's right. an illusion. So uh, they, they cause uh, people to feel it's ridiculous, it's, it's a fantasy, and uh, if we're mature, we'll stay in the ego and the drudgery of that level and accept that. Is that that's all that's possible. Mm -hmm. And people don't even try. Mm -hmm. But if you have enough intellectual curiosity for the truth, then you will discover in, in the practice of meditation that there is a level of consciousness beyond. Mm -hmm the ego and it's filled with light and filled right. with insight right. that you won't get any other way but yeah. through meditating and and uh, the ability to transcend and feel the blissful presence of God mm -hmm. right. and it's that once you have the taste of, of God consciousness that brings right. you to be able to break free of all the ideologies and belief systems of Kali Yuga. Mm -hmm. Well it's something really interesting interesting that connected mm. to me through your teachings was that idea that the ego has captured our soul which now has yes. severed our connection to spirit yes so you're saying that once we're able to return back to our soul yes. free the soul then yes. we're able to restore that connection yes. with god and god consciousness mm -hmm. How does one do that mm. though yeah. <laughs> like just meditation or well the soul is asleep uh -huh. So so the soul is not aware of itself. This is part mm. of the problem. This is why the awakening is so important. And as people see how bad things are and they recognize the deceptive nature of not only the egos running the world and in yeah. the media, but their own ego is lying to them and it's creating false desires and, uh, and, and beliefs and an inability to love and to relate properly. And so people begin to do an inner quest of, of how can I get free of my own addictions and mm -hmm. my own and fears and anxieties and depression and, and they begin a process that usually is psychotherapeutic not spiritual but but they will often get to that point because even many therapists now are turning to spirituality because mm -hmm. they see the hopelessness of psychology <laughs> in its current right. state and and, uh, and and people are beginning to say there must be something more yeah. And when you do that, then the soul will be triggered to awaken and it will extract itself from the ego and go through a rite of passage, which we call ego death. That It's really not, not death because the ego is not alive. Mm -hmm. It's just an operating system. It'll mm -hmm. be deleted from your software mm -hmm. and your brain and then you'll download uh, the operating system of d divine presence and, uh, and the intelligence, the Satchit Ananda of God consciousness. Consciousness. Right. Mm -hmm. The infinite intelligence of God will come, and then uh, you, by surrendering to that, then life becomes spontaneous in accord with the Tao or the Dharma of, of, of the will of God. That's the logos in Christianity. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and all of the religions speak to the same right. issues. There, there's only one religion in the world and, and one spiritual path with many names. Yeah. But, but now that is awakening in everyone. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful. I think, you know, on a practical level, for somebody who has a desire, recognizes that their ego is, you know, many people have this self-awareness, I think, to, to see that they're being controlled by habits and loops of their behavior, and, but they also have a deep desire to fix 
and to yeah. be whole again and to rise up above that which is holding them down um is there like what what is a great practical piece of advice that we could give to somebody in that situation who's asking for first steps of help yeah okay first is to understand the structure of consciousness at the ego level and then at the soul level and then at the supreme level at the ego level that consciousness is split between a conscious and a subconscious and and in between there is a sensor there's an agency that determines what your conscious mind can know what it can remember and and uh, what it can make use of and what it will forget what what it will not be able to take in and what it will repress right freud discovered this back you know 150 years ago now but it was uh, it was something uh, that that all of psychology is based on the recognition really that we have a subconscious <laughs> mind that's where the the habits uh, are and they're based on fantasies and childish constructs because the ego is created when you're still an infant mm -hmm. and so we are run by an infantile program and that's <laughs> when you see when you're an adult and you see you're still acting like a child you say <laughs> something is wrong here right, right? now in the <laughs> traditional cultures there was a rite of passage at puberty and people would then uh, go through an ordeal mm -hmm. and and a vision quest and they would get a new name and they would mm -hmm. realize their true identity and the childish ego would be gone but we don't have have such a rite of passage hmm. anymore right. so people remain children throughout their lives and when the world is run by infantile beings i yeah. say that all the time like <laughs> i look at the people running the world and they're just like big kids yeah. like there's no yes. sense of like moral code or responsibility yes. or just right. like or duty it's just like they're run by the impulses of of the ego of yeah. whatever it is that is the driver inside of them yes. it's fascinating but also terrifying at the same time <laughs> indeed but once you realize that it's a program and you extract yourself from it then you're able to delete the program but the ego is tenacious mm -hmm. so the only way to get out of it is to practice meditation Mm -hmm. And you have to distinguish your buddhi from your manas. This is part of the yogic understanding. Manas, buddhi, ahankar. Ahankar, aham means I, right? Mm -hmm. But the ahamkar is the I thought. And the ego mind will continue to produce I thoughts. I want this, mm -hmm. I hate that, I right. should do this, right? All of those I thoughts. And the manas then creates narratives about them. Oh, those people are like this. And it's full of projections and judgments and all kinds of negative attitudes toward the world. The booty is the capacity of the intellect to discern the illusion that the manas and the ahankara are creating. So if you awaken your booty, that which is becoming a Buddha, right? Mm -hmm. you, be, you awaken the booty at the soul level, you are then able to deconstruct the ego. But to awaken the booty, you have to silence the ego mind. Mm. Because nearly, I'd say 99% of your thoughts are ego thoughts. Mm -hmm. They're not the booty's thoughts, they're ego thoughts. Mm -hmm. And they are deceiving you. Right. And so until you get to the point where you are master of your mind and you can keep the mind silent for a long period in meditation, then you ha create a space in which you download higher knowledge mm -hmm. and, and power, willpower mm -hmm. that the ego doesn't have because it is in internal conflict with itself. The ego wants so many different things that its willpower is paralyzed and deadlocked right. generally right. Be, because it doesn't know what it really wants because it, it lacks essence. But once the booty is awakened and the heart is open, because this happens at chakra four and then chakra five, which mm -hmm. is the wisdom chakra. Mm -hmm. When these two are integrated, then you have the willpower, the wisdom, and the love of life, of God, of truth, of nature, of beauty, to be able to bring about a harmonious life for yourself and to create that for everyone in, in your, your sphere of influence. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, if you are enjoying this episode right now, it would mean the world to us if you could support the Stars and Destruct team and podcast by clicking the subscribe, follow, and like button. Now back to the episode. My question though right now, if we look at the modern day, mm -hmm. everything that's going on in the world, and there's so much suffering for people, right? It's, you know, it's one thing for us to speak about, okay, we must go into deep meditation to awaken you know, the booty and everything, but... I'm just trying to think of, you know, for example, 
to take it there. I, I have family in Ukraine right mm. now, and we're dealing a lot with the war and, you know, having close friends being sent to the front lines mm. and things like that. Actually, just recently, um, I had a close friend from my hometown. Mm. He was sent to the front lines, and his mom is close with my mom, and she mm. called him in tears, just asking, please pray for my son. Mm. This is the second time they sent him to the front wow. lines after he's already survived one bombing. Wow. And I look at her suffering and I look at her despair, this, mm -hmm. this mother, mm -hmm. and I think about how can I come to her and offer her some sort of support to help her through this life and through this suffering right now. Whereas, you know, for her to go into meditation right now, like she's, she's coping with something so difficult. Mm -hmm. How do we... How do we help those people right mm -hmm. now in that deep suffering to even find their way to yes. the light? Well, does she have a belief in God? She does. Okay, then yeah. I would suggest prayer, okay? Yeah. And, and if one prays to God and asks God for help mm -hmm. and for grace and to, for protection and, and for understanding and wisdom, it will come. Prayer mm -hmm. will become meditation. Right. Right. So, uh, th but we have to turn to God. The ego must surrender to a higher power. Without that surrender, nothing can happen. Mm -hmm. But when that, it does happen and, and, and it's sincere and heartfelt, which it would be in that situation, mm -hmm. uh, which is so tragic uh, yeah. and, and, and horrifying, and, and uh, both sides are responsible for this. It isn't just one, uh, because this could have ended already, mm -hmm. but, but it's, it's part of the destruction at the end of Kali mm -hmm. Yuga. This is not the last war. It's the first of many. There are going, it's going to, to spread. Right. Uh, and not that it's really the first. I mean, if you look at Libya and mm -hmm. Syria and Yemen and before that Vietnam, and right, there have been many that the U.S. was responsible for yeah. and NATO and Western Europe and colonialism and all of that. And, and now we see that the balance of power has shifted toward Russia and China and there's, a, there's a, an ultimate conflict between these two power blocks that is going to reach a climax. Uh, mm -hmm. because no power block can uh, submit to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, n the NATO powers are not going to submit to Russia or allow Russia to have an equal say and have multipolarity. N it's not going to happen. So it it's going to come to a head in nuclear war. It's unavoidable. We already know that. We have to face that fact. Mm -hmm. And the, the technology for that is in place, and it will happen very suddenly, and that will be the doomsday, the moment of apocalypse. And uh, it's inevitable. That's how all the prophets have seen it of every religion. They have predicted that we would get to this point. But it's a blessing, because what doom actually means is census. You know, in Russia, the, the parliament is called the Duma. It comes from the same word. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it means that all the souls will be counted by God. There is a final judgment. And, and those who have, have passed will go into very beautiful, luminous uh, levels of consciousness. Others will have to go through purgatories or hell realms. But all of this is going to happen. And the simulation will dissolve in the divine light. God's presence will be totally here. So in, in a sense, it will all end with bliss very soon, not in a long period from now. And, and, uh, and, and the, the suffering will be over. And when it's over, it will be recognized by every soul that this was always only a dream. And they have awakened from it. And they weren't really suffering. The ego was suffering, but the ego is unreal. It's a dream mm -hmm. character. Just like you may have a dream in which you're being bombed or you're suffering and yeah. all of that. And you wake up and you say, oh, I'm so glad it was only a dream. Right. right? Yeah. So that's the way, what will happen. People will wake up and they will be so uh, in joy that it was only a dream. And that they, they still retain their soul, which is eternal. And uh, that there will be a return. If they haven't grabbed graduated, they will have another opportunity in the next cycle. So no one is left behind mm -hmm. and no one suffers more than their karma had um, um, conscripted or mandated. Mm -hmm. the, the law of karma is accurate, even though it may take a long time for it to come. And so everyone only suffers to that extent. Mm 
and uh, and then they are saved. There is salvation for everyone at the end. So, uh, so we, if we have to trust God and recognize the goodness mm -hmm. that is underlying all of this, even though it seems like evil is running the world, it's not actually, because it's leading to the ultimate blessing of all, which is the return of all souls to God. Right. And then to the creation of a kingdom of heaven after that. Well, it's such a drive in the last... 10 years of exponentially it seems like a dog pile of sorts like one thing after another after another yes. and like even if you just look at since the industrial revolution how yes. f how much destruction has just exponentially yes. carried this momentum forward yes. and to hear um that a you have a deep belief that nuclear war is inevitable um it's something i think that a lot of people um might struggle with uh, myself mm -hmm. included, just being like, mm -hmm. it's a lot to... What? What are we preparing yeah. for now? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's interesting to the sense with a deep belief in God, I think there's there's salvation in that and the mm -hmm. understanding of everyone waking up from from mm -hmm. that dream. But what if someone was to say or propose, isn't there another way? Well, let me say this, that if we didn't have this war, it would be even worse the human species has become no longer the crown of creation and the top of the food chain. It's a slave species. We have literally become enslaved mm -hmm. and we have been microchipped yeah. and, and we belong to a, a globalist cabal mm -hmm. that has taken over the world and wants to run it. And God's not going to allow that to happen because right. that would be a fate worse than death. Right. to have slavery of, of the species right, so. uh, and total loss of the human spirit. Mm -hmm. And right now, if we look at everything, and we have to see this holistically, mm -hmm. understand the whole, th there is already a massive die-off of species of life. Yeah. The biosphere is dead. The oceans are dead. The soils are dead. The bees are almost dead and the butterflies and all the creatures that are responsible for sustaining sustaining life in the biosphere. There is a food shortage. There will soon be famine. There, there will be all kinds of suffering that are created both by geophysical instability, climate change, mm -hmm. and all of the other things that are going on, as well as all the man-made and the geoengineering aspects mm -hmm. that are also going on secretly. But all of this uh, is creating a situation in, in which life will not be worth living. Yeah. And, and so God is bringing the suffering to an end in, in the most merciful way possible because it will happen suddenly. Within a single hour, it will end. And, and for most people, instantly, and they will feel no pain. It will happen mm -hmm. so fast. The incineration of massive nuclear uh, explosions, if you know how they are now, with gigantic 100 megaton you know, bombs, and they're very effective and very precise. And, and so th this is all being worked out by beings who don't know they're working for God, but they mm -hmm. actually are. And and it's the only way to save us from enslavement to, to very demonic powers. Right. And, but those demonic powers have to be defeated by human souls before that happens. That's why we have to gain our liberation and the human sovereignty again as manifestations of God. And, and that's why there has to be choreographed, which God is responsible for and accomplishing, of, of a simultaneous rise in consciousness mm -hmm. of all those who want to awaken and become liberated, and at the same time, the freeing from suffering from all of those who are not able to, or they're, they're young souls, they're not mature enough to have that desire yet, and, uh, and they will be uh, taken out of their bodies and out of their suffering suffering quickly and without any um, uh, uh, traces of leftover uh, pain or horror or sanskaras, right. you know, of, uh, of feeling negativity. All of that will be eliminated by God. That's powerful. It's astounding. You know, a hundred years ago or more, actually it was in the, probably the 1820s, when um, it was first recognized that human beings as a species, but in the West in particular, by Western philosophers, that humanity had become nihilistic. 
the term nihilism yes. came in, mm-hmm. into being. And people don't realize it, but Hegel was the first one to say God is dead. Uh, because Christianity had died. People still believed, but there was no real essence to it any longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the same for all of the Abrahamic religions. Mm-hmm. They, they had fallen into a corrupt and uh, uh, ineffective uh, means for reaching God. And so uh, Hegel said God was dead. Nietzsche said God yeah. was dead shortly after that, right? But, and, and it was accepted. But what does that really mean? It means that because the belief in God was lost, Lost, that God has become death, right? right? God can't die, but God is here now as death. Huh. And the mass death that is happening is the return to God. Death is not a tragedy. Death is not horrible. Mm-hmm. We are all dead every between lives all yeah. the time, and it's blissful. Death is not something to fear. The ego fears death, though, the, right? Only the ego, yeah. but the ego, again, is in a way Satan. It's the demonic p- part of consciousness that rejects God and mm-hmm. denies God and is nihilistic. Right. And, and has eliminated him from all aspects of our culture and society at this point. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So the ego has to be eliminated and we return to soul consciousness and then to divine consciousness of the ultimate level. And then a new world will come about quickly, in- instantly. Mm-hmm. You know, a simulation doesn't require a slow evolutionary process. The Big Bang is not really how it happened. And uh, Darwinian evolution is not reality. Uh, everything happens instantly and it happens at the highest highest level first and goes down, not Mm -hmm. that we gradually go up. So everything will happen in a very beautiful way. And it will happen without any memory of the horror. So the, in the next age, there, there will be no uh, nostalgia or sadness that, oh, all those people had to die. No, there'll be no recognition, no memory. Mm-hmm. We already are in a state of amnesia for our past. We don't right. realize that we were once gods and have fallen. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we don't realize that we soon will be a, a species of, of godlike beings again. Wow. So the people that are really behind this terrible situation right now, if we're looking again at the war going on between Russia and Ukraine, so you're saying the people behind it, like Putin and and all people in power, they are of that demonic energy force, or are they just completely severed? from their soul they're just run well, by that's the what ego. the demonic is so right. most of them yeah. are yes yeah. most of the people and it includes you know the the uh billionaires many of them and, right. and, and the, there's a you know a conglomerate of beings mm-hmm. who are who think they're running the world they, they mm-hmm. are not really and their plans are not going according to the way they wish they would they're in a state of anxiety as mm-hmm. well so mm-hmm. it's not like they're so happy and everybody else is suffering uh-huh. No, they they will also lose in this. They will not win, and and you know they've created underground cities. They think they'll survive the nuclear war. You mm-hmm. know, and, and the U.S. has gigantic uh, underground cities and and military bases, etc. But uh, they will all crack. Uh, there'll be volcanoes and other action that will eliminate them. So the 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 ones who think they're so smart and masters of the universe and able to to create these uh, these genocides will not succeed. Uh, God will be victorious, and all of those who are working with God will will realize that victory, and all souls will 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 have to go through a judgment. Yeah. So, if we can purify ourselves now and be free of needing to be judged and become angels now Mm -hmm. by uh, awakening our subtle bodies, our light bodies, and then functioning here as angels on the planet, then we will really be able to serve in in the upliftment Mm -hmm. of all of those who want to realize their divine nature. Mm -hmm. And that will fulfill our own uh, karmic debt that we have fallen into in our own past lives by becoming egocentric ourselves and overcome whatever negative uh, karma we did in this or other lives and and bring us back into union with God. So after this massive destruction that you believe that there's going to be a nuclear destruction, Mm -hmm. um, is that kind of how the golden age is going to be birthed? And where will that be? And where would that be? And how does that look like? Okay. 
First of all, it's not only a, a, a nuclear destruction. If you see the increase of super mm -hmm. volcanoes that are going yeah. off, right. earthquakes, massive ones mm -hmm. are increasing mm -hmm. exponentially as well, T tsunamis, yeah. every possible kind of thing is happening, even asteroids hitting their so it's, it's all going to happen. The signs and wonders are going to be beyond a belief. And we also see glitches in the matrix and people are becoming aware that things are very strange and, and, and they're, 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 they're not natural mm -hmm. and there are unexplainable events that are going on. So things are happening that are making people much more aware that there are forces that are invisible mm -hmm. that are acting on the world as well. What kind of glitches? Oh, there are, there are all kinds of things. We, people have, you've heard of the Mandela effect. Yeah. The Mandela right? effect yeah. is fascinating. Yeah. And you also see airplanes stopped in the air. Yeah. You know, yes, you see all, all we've, kinds we've, of yeah. strange things happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we could go on and on. There's hundreds of, of very strange phenomena. I mean, there's plenty of websites devoted <laughs> to those. Right. And, and some of them are not real. Some of them are fakes right. and hoaxes, but some of them are real. Mm -hmm. and, and these things are really happening. So uh, the, the world is becoming stranger and stranger and people are awakening to the fact that it's not real mm. and that but there is a reality beyond that's responsible for it and we have to connect with the ultimate reality mm -hmm. and then we will we will gain the power to transcend this illusion and this awakening um, that rises up amidst all of everything going on is the awakening a purpose in order to then once reborn be reborn as you're saying to like a level of you know god consciousness or is the awakening a possibility to actually change the direction that all of this is moving and it, and save mm -hmm. it because at the beginning you mentioned like a very realm we're, we're getting down to the last minute now mm -hmm. is that the last minute for us to save ourselves or is that the last minute to save others or to save the storyline well once you real once you've saved yourself in other words your consciousness is now in resonance with god's mind you will recognize that everything is happening is perfect <laughs> and there's no need to change anything because god's <laughs> mind is perfect right so there's nothing you need to do uh, except then complete the will of god by mm -hmm. serving a a as one who uplifts others and and the ones who are meant to be uplifted will be uplifted and mm -hmm. those who aren't or they wasn't their time yet yeah. you see there are old souls and there are souls who are of a mi middle age and there are young souls mm -hmm. this, there are some souls who have only had one birth uh, in this world and the whole cycle they didn't participate in the golden age or the silver or the copper they mm -hmm. come at the end of the iron age and this is their golden age at mm. least this time around. The ones who are billionaires and, and the Trumps and the Reagans and the right. Bidens, the, you know, they, they, for 15 minutes they run the world, you know, <laughs> although they're demented and hopeless and right, impossible, yeah. but they feel like they, they, everything belongs to them and it's, it's a sham and it's very short, but they get that. So everyone has a golden age, but then they fall very quickly into right. their own, in one lifetime, they go through a whole cycle in microcosm. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's those souls who, who will then learn from their mistakes and become a slightly older souls next time and then right. older and older. But there are some very old souls who come from the last Sat Yoga. Those are the ones who will awaken to the highest level and be the, the, the forces, the archangels, if you will, who will bring about the, the transformation. And, and I want to get back to what you asked uh, before that I didn't quite answer, which is, you know, what science has recently discovered is that there is not only matter, but there is antimatter. Mm -hmm. And there is an entire antimatter universe. That antimatter universe is both different and not different from this universe. Because antimatter is this matter, but going in the other direction in time. Hmm. And, and so it's, it's the same and yet it's different. But there are two timelines. And in the other timeline uh, and this timeline are about to meet. And when they meet, it will be the meeting of matter and antimatter universes. And when matter and antimatter meet, they annihilate each other instantaneously. Hmm. And, and when they annihilate each other, they annihilate space, they annihilate time. 
They annihilate the entire universe as if it never was. And there is only God. Mm. That's how this will end. And then the mind of God will spring a new right. simulation into being at the highest level. And will that be the golden age? Yes. So no violence is, mm -hmm. is involved because mm -hmm. it's instantaneous, no suffering. Wow. This entire cosmos is an artificial construct. It's amazing. That's so powerful. It's really beautiful. Yeah. And as far as the human experience through this, mm -hmm. in our bodies, struggling with our egos, and our entire sort of journey as souls, rebirth again and again, are we the only ones here? in this entire cosmos? Or do you think there's other humans in other places or other beings? There like are beings in other planets and many of them are here. Right. Some of them are here participating and trying to take over this real estate because it's very nice and they are supporting the cabal. Mm -hmm. And there are others who are much higher in their spiritual development uh, who are here because this is where the presence of God will be most intense in the cosmos to bring about that ultimate uh, salvation, let's say, and they want to be part of that. So, so they are being drawn here to this uh, out-of-the-way planet because it does have that vibrational frequency and the free will of God consciousness that isn't present in many other uh, types of life forms. Mm -hmm. And so it, through this understanding, like looking at things that have been happening over the last 10 or even, I mean, a couple of years, even since the pandemic um, has the happened. Pandemic, I would call pandemic. It. <laughs> If I the like cabal the is uh, and able to, to succeed, uh, there will be other viruses, other injections that will be even worse, oh, yeah. that will create the ins total enslavement of the brain, mm -hmm. which is part of what they want as well as killing off most. But the rest of humans will literally be totally enslaved. Well, and there's no worse fate. I, when you said that yes. earlier, that resonated so, mm -hmm. so truthfully yes. inside me. Like it, it's like a, it's, it's almost like we imagined it so it's possible. Like I think of The Matrix, like yeah. the movie The Matrix. Yeah. And you think about what that existence is yes. and how many steps away are that? Are we from that? If we can imagine it, we're already letting them put chips in our bodies. Yes. We're already letting them, you know, control us to levels that we a year ago would have said we would be uncontrollable mm -hmm. that way. But then you mentioned something that there was no virus. But if people are listening to this right now, they're going to say, well, we've all, we've had COVID twice. You know what I mean? There was a People virus. have a flu. The flu, a flu. A flu season has always yeah. been there. If you look at it, they say there's no flu anymore. There's only COVID, right? <laughs> right. No, it's true. Uh, so, uh, but. So if they're microchipping people. Yes. Why? For what reason? Well, then you're under constant surveillance. Uh, and so whenever they want to locate you in order to eliminate you or arrest you or whatever, right. uh, they, can, they can stop you. They can control where you go, how far you're able to travel, uh, anything they want. Well, they've, and, al they've already done that to us. We're Canadians. Yeah. Oh, yes, right. <laughs> like right. We like, were Canadian refugees in Costa Rica. You can, see, you can <laughs> yeah. literally yeah. see like yeah. clips of our fearless leader, mm -hmm. or fearful leader, we yeah. should say, yes. um, saying the things that he would never do 24 months ago are all of the exact things that he did and implemented. Mm -hmm. And the things that, you know, would have pulled back then is like, you know, basically the general consensus would imagine it to be unfathomable mm -hmm. and unconstitutional. Um, they're excitedly embracing and saying mm -hmm. is the necessary for, yeah. for the common good. Right. Um, and that's, I find mm -hmm. that really interesting. Like, there's an absence of critical thought in yes. 2022. And, right. and to me, that's like one of the most mm -hmm. astounding features yes. of this entire uh, production. This Because mm -hmm. it feels like it's a, like a stage play. Yes. And it was, as we right. watch it all play in the different places you can perceive it, um, the, the fact that it takes great courage to critical think. Um, and so therefore, in a time of fear, critical thought then dies at the hands of exactly that. Yes. Um, so how do we like, how do we encourage critical thought and how like, because as much as I think encouraging walking a spiritual path is necessary, I think critical thought is hand in hand in that. Yes. Because in order to recognize we need to meditate more yes. and in order to recognize we need to work on our own soul and, and destroying and killing our own ego, mm -hmm. that takes great critical thought. But when it comes to the pandemic, it's just sort of taken that, that that necessary skill away from so many yes. human beings and just stripped it from them. Right. 
Well, you know, many people never had it in the first place because the educational system mm. in the West is so bad. That's, uh, that's most people never get a course in critical thinking and are never encouraged to think critically. Right. right. They're encouraged to obey. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's often not there. In other cases, it's there, but there's a desire not to know because yes. there's too much fear. And in other cases, there's actually coercion. If you start to think and speak out publicly, you lose your job, you will be attacked, you may have your bank account frozen, <laughs> right? You may lose everything. Mm -hmm. So it's more about protecting one's uh, illusion of security, not the lack of critical thinking. Right. But most people have been either bought off or scared off. Yeah. And there's quiet corners of people yeah. who do critically think mm -hmm. but are so scared to That's even right. speak in their own social circles. Correct. And yeah. I think to us, again, it goes back to sort of the premise of why conversations like this, um, whether it's accurate or not, just the, a the, the access to to give people courage to talk. Mm -hmm. That people right. like mm -hmm. us are worried about the fact that we can't even have a discussion. You're censored right. like that. Yeah. It's just like they take the away censorship. your right to speak. Um, we spoke out once, very, very little bit about um, the Freedom Convoy. I don't know if you've heard in oh, Canada. I wouldn't say it was a little bit. We posted about it. We posted it. You know, uh, on social media ourselves standing with two signs that says mandate freedom. Mm -hmm. That's all we said. And we tried to really drive the narrative of being in the middle. We didn't want to be, we pick this side or this mm -hmm. side. We talked about bringing yoga into this perspective of mm -hmm. oneness and unity that we need to unite as people mm -hmm. and see each other as two souls, not this, mm -hmm. you know, anti-pro-vax. Right. And the interesting thing about us coming from the direction of love and unity to see the amount of backlash mm -hmm. and negativity and threats that we received mm -hmm. from people, like from our community, even that, you know, some decided to leave our community, mm -hmm. some decided to, you know, insult us and our family mm -hmm. and things like that. And just to see like the intensity, mm -hmm. like, I feel like everybody's so charged yes. right now with this negativity. Mm -hmm. How do we bring everybody down? Mm -hmm. How do we connect people mm -hmm. again? Well, again, the more you have courage, the more you can inspire others to have courage. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, in the ego itself, there is embedded within it a fear of death. And there's such a, f uh, a, a reason to have that fear now. It has been triggered. Mm -hmm. And those who see the truth are in a state of anxiety because they know what's happening and they're, they are, uh, <clears throat> they're, they are in, in addition to the fear, there's the shame and the guilt for not having mm. the courage to do it. Right. But in order to break through this, you have to be willing to face death. You have to say, uh, uh, I, uh, truth is more important and following the will of God and, uh, and being a, a being who is pure and who lives in love and who wants life to thrive. It's not that I want the world to end, by the way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I, 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 and that's why a new world, it's important to know that a new world is coming, but it, we have to gain the courage by transcending the ego and its fear of death and to know that there is no death. Mm -hmm. It's only when you are in death consciousness that you will have the courage to mm -hmm. truly speak the truth in full and that's what more and more of us have, have to yeah. have and we have to go through that rite of passage in order to have that and mm -hmm. that's what yoga is about right to us that's what yoga is about yeah it truly is it's but you see in the yoga community there's a lot of people that are intimidated by it and they just they, yes. they step back sure. they recluse and they you know, obey. Sure, because mm -hmm. yoga for them is an exercise <laughs> to look good and feel good, but it's not about transcendence mm -hmm. of the ego. But right. that's what yoga originally means right. and is and has always remained. And that's what we have to emphasize again. Mm -hmm. That's why here we, we, we call ourselves jnana yogis, the mm -hmm. yoga of knowledge, of the truth. Right. Yeah. And the Hatha Yoga is a, a sideline. We do it, but mm -hmm. we don't emphasize that. It's the meditation and the wisdom that comes from meditation mm -hmm. and the ability to live in truth and to overcome the ego's desire for impure enjoyments and addictions that take away its power to live at a higher frequency. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to have the discipline to go through that self-transformation to achieve that courage and that freedom.
Mm -hmm. But freedom is what life is about. If you're not free, life isn't worth living. And you have to have that freedom internally. Yes. Then you'll have it externally. People think we'll get it externally and then we'll have it. No, yeah. it has to start from within. And everyone has to take responsibility for going first, mm -hmm. not waiting for others to do yeah. it. And then things will happen. I think freedom is the, the great, was the great motivator for, for so much of what Juliana was explaining was that post, mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. idea yes. that, that a government can take freedom away with yes. the snap of a finger yes. um, under the guise of something that seems so false. Mm -hmm. um, false. And at that point in history, so false. Like it wasn't like it was yeah. at the beginning when it was a big mystery. Is this, are we all going to turn into zombies? Mm -hmm. Are we all going to, you know. Well, like, that's what they told you. Because at, at the first. very beginning yeah. of it, no one knew. But yeah. it's funny that like this mm -hmm. was, you know, 11th hour into mm -hmm. the, into the, yeah. the nonsense. And all of a sudden, you know, playing street hockey and, and and it was like it was a bunch of people playing street hockey with bouncy castles like yeah, yeah. giving away free food doing all this and now like tamara lich is in prison yes. like so we're talking yes. about like talk about looking into a mirror it's like yes. we persecute russia and so many tyrannical states for putting their political opponents in prison yeah. and you know the political the main a political opponent that speaks mm -hmm. of freedom in canada is now mm -hmm. behind bars That's right. it's fascinating like, yes. but but everyone on this side of the fence doesn't have the courage to look at that, make sure. that comparison, and explore what might be a different perspective than the one being fed to them actually is. Sure. Right or wrong, I'm not sure I have the capacity to explore that, but I, I think it's important to explore all sides of the prism That's right. and to look inside to figure out the, the truth and the depth in there. Because yes. I find truth really interesting. We're talking about truth a lot, but... Are we as humans capable of understanding an ultimate truth? Oh yes, but at the soul level, not at the ego level. Right. And the ego level doesn't want to know because the more you know at the ego level, the more shame you feel <laughs> for your own self-betrayal. Right. So you have to transcend the ego in, uh, in order to want to know then the full truth of God mm. consciousness. Do you think but let me just add, in, in addition to what you said, there are many political prisoners in the West. Julian Assange Julian is a Assange. prisoner for a long time. And why? because he revealed crimes that a government was committing mm -hmm. right and now there is disinformation and there is censorship on the internet so you're not allowed to speak the truth mm -hmm. it, it, it's completely uh, marginalized and ridiculed right snowden look yeah. it's Sno yeah. like I right. uh, honestly like assange's story at snowden's stories they're making movies about it yet no mm -hmm. one's doing anything to no. say oh well that like there's this very strange almost like psychosis in our culture it's a mass psychosis well where we can yeah. look at terrible things five years ago mm -hmm. and think well those terrible things aren't happening now let's make a movie about that and let's yeah, yeah. let's let's glorify yeah, it and yeah. talk about it and then let's not actually assess what's happening in the current state right. yes. where I think to some degree it's probably worse now than it was five years oh, ago. Oh, much worse. Yet, like you're saying, this denial, this mm. egoic denial to say, to, to explore that rather than like fantasize about what happened before. We know the CIA is a terrible institution and has done nothing yeah. but, but yeah. basically police secretly the entire globe implementing, you know, the, the, the arm of America. Yet no one's saying, well, what are they doing now? If that's what they were doing in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. And we know every decade all of the atrocities. Sure. And it's, so it's, it's really fascinating to me. And you're right, political prisoners in the West, it's, yeah. this, is, this is not new. In a way, we're all political prisoners now. Huh. And, and yeah. the world is a necropolis. <laughs> it, it's a, there's an ongoing death event, a mass death, a mass die-off is happening every day. And people don't want to see it. Uh, but the statistics are there, even though they try to fudge them and, mm -hmm. and, and make them as uh, as low as possible. But it's still quite visible. But nobody acts. You mentioned the word zombie before. But in fact, the majority are becoming zombies. Mm -hmm. And some of them because of chemical changes, uh, mm -hmm. genetic changes caused by injections. But others simply because uh, their critical abilities to think and their ability to separate from the herd because of their terror of uh, of a truth that would make them enemies oh, of the right. state yeah. uh, uh, keeps them in a zombie condition. Yeah. That's so fascinating. We used to watch, and we still do, we watch a YouTube channel called We Are Change. And sort of we try to find places, different types of places we can get information from. And as the pandemic was starting, um, Luke was right on the heels of it. And he was right about so much of it. And he's this independent journalist. He does it from wherever mm -hmm. he is, hotel rooms, wherever. But he's like, he's really passionate at... at 
challenging the establishment, but also in trying to figure out where the truth lies inside. And there was a point in that where Julianne and I, ahead of everyone, like, and I'm not, it's not, I'm not bragging. It's, there's no, like, there's no sense of, of um, achievement being ahead. It was just, he gave us information. We were like, so, you know, we recognized something was coming, but the biggest fear to that was, to us, we're like, what if it is what we're seeing in China where it's like zombies? Like people yeah. are falling like, on the street. And then of course there's this big breath of air that came out where we're like, oh, it's just the flu. But now <laughs> you think about it and you literally just tied it full circle to it. It was actually creating zombies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because whether but also distracted zombies well, too. Like I feel like you you hear it's some things that happen in the world, and then you would expect people to be like, "What?" Like I think about, for example, Epstein. Like that whole situation where like it's been revealed that there's been children abused on an mm -hmm. island with many very like important mm -hmm. high level people, and they talk about it, and then everyone just forgets, and we move on mm -hmm. with our day. It's like have we just become that asleep as as you know, people yeah. like as a collective, collective body, a collective yeah. body that we can't even like wake, wake up to the idea. What, what was that? You mm -hmm. know? Well, like, the majority are accustomed to being slaves huh. and the slaves have no right to question the masters, even though the masters are perverts and murderers mm. and all of the kinds of things that we know. Um, nonetheless, uh, they, they are feel powerless. They have been indoctrinated into feeling powerless and they do feel powerless. And they've been taught to go and buy things and eat things and do things to distract themselves mm -hmm. and to not care about the political things that only the upper class deals with. It's not right. for us plebeians to deal with <laughs> the, what the political class is doing. That's their business. And, and so people feel like uh, they are simply uh, distant spectators mm -hmm. of, of these events without any voice or any say. And and for the most part, that's true. So there really isn't a possibility of political revolution any longer. And, and the police are part of that uh, ruling cabal. They are not on the side of the people. Mm -hmm. as, and the armies also, even though the armies are being forcibly injected also. Yeah. And you have people quitting, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. most are going along with it. Uh, and, and so you see, and that proves that they're not interested in winning these wars because you wouldn't inject your own army with lethal injections that makes them incapable of flying planes and all of that if you really wanted victory. It's not about that. It's about mass destruction. Right. Uh, and so you have to understand that they, this has been decided already by those beings. But uh, the, the lower uh, classes, and everyone's now in the lower class, because the middle class has been destroyed, frankly. Right. And, and this, these are all banana republics, as they used to call them. <laughs> uh, and and uh, there's no uh, uh, political power by the majority any longer. All that we have left is spiritual power. Wow. That, that's our only last weapon, and it's the ultimate weapon, and it's stronger than nuclear weapons because it overcomes death. Right. Do you think that, I mean, I was listening to Marianne Williamson recently talk about the connection between, um, between the spiritual movement and the political movement. Because when she went into politics, a lot of people told her she was out of her lane. Mm -hmm. And she tied a lot of the, the movements of abolition and change and social change and justice to the spiritual movements. And it was really interesting how she did it. And I'm not going to butcher it by trying to give the examples. But there was a direct correlation between political change and spiritual um, awakening. Sure. Do you think that with enough <clears throat> of the good work done that is possible in the stage no. we're in no not anymore look at the elections are rigged oh hey i so i don't i <laughs> that's true i think she went into a lane that yeah i don't believe voting has any power at this no. point at all anymore not even rigged i think it's just a facade okay. it feels like a facade to me sure um but i so <clears throat> but in so much that to build a new system outside of that system only if, he, if there are enough spiritually liberated beings right. who, who are fearless and, and totally in alignment with the will of God. And yes, a new world will be created, but this one will have to go through destruction. Right. There, there's a death, and out of the death is rebirth. That's the way the world works. I like that. You can't avoid the death and then mm -hmm. still have rebirth. Mm -hmm. right. This world is already too broken, too polluted. Uh, too, the, the web of life has been destroyed. Uh, it has to go through its terminal phase, but death is not, not a bad thing. 
it, it's this horror of death that we have to get right. over. Mm -hmm. we, we're in a, a massive planetary death event. It is underway. The idea of trying to stop it and resist it and work our way around it, that's a right. waste of our efforts. <laughs> we should be reaching God consciousness and accepting God's will and, and then be, becoming co-creators of the new world that will come about as a result of our having transcended the illusions and gained consciousness of the whole. It is that absolute self that we are all manifestations of. There's only one self and one intelligence behind all of this. And we are all parts of that. And when we can contain the entire whole, then we have power to make a shift in the manifest, the explicate order, as the right. physicist David Bohm called it. But until we have arrived at the implicate order, uh, we cannot uh, achieve any transformation at this level. You s I remember there was the idea of the, the night, was it um, the dark night of the soul, right? Yeah. And that's an idea in our souls when we get to that point where we have to, to me I always visualize like you have to walk through the fire and mm -hmm. not burn at the stake. Mm -hmm. I feel to me that we are right now as a collective body at like collectively at that t at that part. Mm -hmm. Do you think we can grow from it and find strength or are we are we burning at the stake now? We can't even go through the fire anymore collectively. Collectively, no, the fire no. will destroy bodies uh -huh. and egos. Mm -hmm. But souls will remain, and pure spirit remains, obviously. So that, that's, what, that's what the purification is really about. Mm -hmm. If you realize who you are, you will be unaffected by the burning of whether it's nuclear or whether right. it's spiritual or whether it's any, uh, any level of that, because it's all unreal, the manifest. What's real is God. And when you are in God consciousness, uh, you will recognize mm -hmm. that the, the creation of a new world without any trace of the current suffering, it, instantly, w without uh, any time being required for it, that is the best way to go. And that's what God's plan is. Wow. And when, once there is that destruction of matter and antimatter, then the, it's instantaneous. It's, and we're outside of time. And that's when you know God fully. God is beyond time and space. God is eternity. And we are also eternal beings. And when once we are back in our full eternal mode, that's when mm -hmm. that power of creation then is reborn. And you speak about finding God and connecting to that energy within us, the soul. And, you know, people practice a whole lifetime to reach that nirvana state, that mm -hmm. through meditation. But then you see there's other people, and we know a lot of communities, especially in Nosara, where, where we're living right now, where they use plant medicine to help them gain that connection with the spirit. Mm -hmm. What is your take on plant medicine and the use of it to get to that level mm -hmm. of consciousness? It's a complex question uh, because, uh, first of all, in, in Peru, ayahuasca was used, and other parts of uh, Colombia, other parts of South America, it was used by shamans mm -hmm. who were extremely well trained in dealing with the mindset of the campesinos, of, of the tribal people in those areas, and they served the tribes. And for the most part, it was the shamans who took the plant medicine mm -hmm. on behalf of the clients, not the clients who wow. took it. The shamans mm -hmm. took it, and they were then able to see whatever demonic powers or thought forms were oppressing the person and remove them, and then help bring t divine energy in. But a shaman was someone who was well-trained for decades and apprenticed to another mm -hmm. shaman mm -hmm. and learned how to make use of the plant medicines properly. You come into the West with an entirely different uh, psychic structure of the Western ego, very different than the tribal <laughs> ego in, in South America. A and that same medicine can have very different effects. Mm -hmm. It will help some people get to a higher state for a few hours mm -hmm. but, and believe they went through ego death, but it was a delusion. They come back and their egos are still there. Mm -hmm. It can have some people have mixed uh, experiences where they have some superconscious elements come into their trip and some subconscious fantasies and delusions come in and they will have uh, they'll be more confused when they 
come out of it, then they will be helped. You have others who have a latent psychotic fragment in their subconscious, and they will literally go psychotic, and they won't come back. Wow. And I know people, I've worked with many people who have taken the mm -hmm. plant medicines. I've also done them. I'm experienced in this. Yeah. And I don't recommend it except in certain conditions where there is really a, an adept uh, shaman who also is psychoanalytically trained, mm -hmm. who understands who should take it and who shouldn't in the first place, and how to deal with bad experiences and how to deal with uh, spirit possession that can sometimes mm -hmm. happen and other kinds of of uh, supernatural phenomena that most therapists don't know how to deal with and most shamans don't know how to deal mm -hmm. with. And there can be a shattering of the, the psychic vessel uh, of a person so that they can never come back together again and they're wow. destroyed for life. So, and even the people who are helped the most by ayahuasca uh, and I myself am in that category, you don't get liberation from it. Mm -hmm. You get a glimpse. The same with whether it's mushrooms or DMT in some other form. You, you get a glimpse uh, of the, some higher dimensions, not the absolute reality. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you get an intermediate plane mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. where there are spirits in the plural. Right. And some good, some not so good. And, and uh, at best you will experience angels and you'll en encounter uh, information from the Akash records and other right. other things that will help you in your life but you won't achieve liberation spiritual liberation has to be done without drugs it has to be done in a meditative state where, where it is your own will to transcend that is responsible mm -hmm. for it not some supplement that was artificial or temporary it has to be something that then you can sustain you have to turn nirvikalpa samadhi into sahaja samadhi which means a level of samadhi that you you never leave that right. stays there even when you're in an ordinary waking state you're always connected right. you never lose your god consciousness and and without having done that liberation is uh, mm. only a dream it's not real yet it's just a taste yeah a glimpse mm. do you a think glimpse. they glimpse it well you can get a glimpse of higher states uh, and of the potentiality of consciousness uh, for its infinity right. and beauty, mm -hmm. but you won't get liberated from the matrix. That won't happen. Right. That has to be done through your own sadhana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To us, we've never done it. Mm -hmm. um, we've been around it for it feels like a decade so many people in our direct circles you know we went to peru and we saw it being like commercialized and, and, unfortunately and, what's yeah. happening and sold to westerners and it made mm. us sick while we yeah. were it was just like to see it in like sign windows and yeah. things like this like it's it was causing just, a lot of damage oh my goodness a lot of people. and and that's and we've seen a lot of people yeah. at arm's length like yeah. come out not better we've no. seen we, we there is always a story you know and I, I won't just focus on the negative but there's a lot of people who claim that trauma was healed through it there's a lot right. of you know addiction that is said to be reversed so there you know i i'm not a doctor i'm not yeah. a shaman there I are some cases of that I, of I course don't deny that either but it's just it's so frightening to us to see well to see the the damage like we've had one, mm -hmm. uh, one person in specifically go into a psychotic episode and, and mm -hmm. point to us as mm -hmm. his as his energy center to enact Attack. these terrible, yeah. mm -hmm. terrible, oh. like demonic and, and mm -hmm. like, and he yeah. never came back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It never came back. I understand. Um, so it's a, it's a something we're very always curious to. And Juliana at her, one of her teacher trainings, I, um, what, what was it that your teacher was saying about it being a, the, the fast track? Like, well, it was very similar to what you're saying. I had mm. a meditation teacher in India tell me the same thing because somebody asked him, like, what is your thought on, on psychedelics and plant mm. medicine? And he's saying that it, not only does it, is that a fast track, but also it's very addictive because mm. people feel like, oh my gosh, I, I had a glimpse. I want to mm. go back. I want to go yeah. back. I want to go back. And they keep you know, yeah. taking and taking it. And that, yeah. again, you're, you're, you're dealing with chemicals in the brain. Like, yeah. that can't be safe no it's not and yeah. often you need higher doses and, uh -huh. and your trips tend to get worse and worse your first ones may be beautiful mm -hmm. and then you start to get the demonic side of, right. of that uh, vibrational frequency uh, and you don't it's not a fast track to liberation right mm -hmm. it's only a, a track to an intermediate level of consciousness right. that's that's a dead end mm -hmm. 
uh, so I don't recommend it. Have you signed up to be a Star Walker yet? If you haven't, there's a link down in the description of this video or in the show notes, and it's where you sign up for the Star Walker newsletter. There, you'll get behind the scenes content, you'll get notifications of new episodes, and all kinds of extra little goodies that we're planning on sending throughout the rest of this year. We have tons of new episodes coming up, so join us there. Be a Star Walker. Back to the episode. The interesting thing, because you just mentioned trauma and something I wanted to bring forward, because I do feel like a lot of people that have suffered through trauma and they haven't found a way to heal themselves, maybe they haven't had the right teachers or guides, they go to plant medicine, they go to ayahuasca because they think that's their answer yes. to heal trauma. But now, we're, you know, we were discussing here that it's not always the answer, may not be the safest mm -hmm. way. What else would you recommend for somebody that is in mm -hmm. that very difficult place in their life right now that is looking for healing they need to be in an energy field that can contain them and and accept the the trauma they need to experience truth mm -hmm. they need to experience divine love and they need to experience an extraction from the ego into the soul because the soul is not traumatized it's only in the ego right and so if one achieves soul consciousness one can be relieved of the trauma and if one deletes the ego program the trauma is gone but it has to be done in soul consciousness and and that can't be done on plant medicine you're not able to do the processing in that right. and afterwards you, you you're too confused or you you're in a depleted state because of what uh, the energy effect on the brain has been of it. So it, it's not uh, the best way of doing it. Under certain controlled uh, therapeutic uh, conditions, uh, it can uh, be effective, I think, if you have somebody trained who knows how to use those medicines mm -hmm. properly. But it can be done most safely and, uh, and we're designed to do it through meditation and through uh, a, an intersubjective processing in which we feel safe again to love. Because it's usually that the heart is closed and, and we are covered with defense mechanisms mm -hmm. that, that have created aggression and, mm -hmm. and, and paranoia and those things. And when we can release ourselves of those, the trauma is gone. Right. How do you open the heart, though? How do you open yourself yeah. to love? Well, that's why you have to be in a safe situation yeah. with someone who is liberated or someone who is at least in soul consciousness who can offer that divine love that's unconditional, without judgment, without projection, and enable you to gradually or quickly let go of mm. the defense mechanisms and the negative beliefs about yourself and about the world and, uh, and then start fresh and, and be in that core of divine light that is never touched by trauma. And so to anyone listening that is experiencing trauma or is at least self-aware that it's affecting their ability to function, um, how do, how would, how can they, like, what are the steps towards? Like, what is pr a practical way of finding someone like that that you describe? Well, an ashram like this, that's yeah. one of the reasons we created this ashram, to be able to offer retreats for people and longer term stays to help mm -hmm. them to, to heal. Uh, there are other places where that can happen, other spiritual communities, and there are some uh, therapists who are well trained and mm -hmm. who do know how to use uh, different medicines when they are, um, let's say, um, re required to heal the trauma because of its severity and also safe to use. Mm -hmm. uh, and this includes other other types of, of substances as well, like MDMA and LSD even, and uh, mushrooms and various other uh, 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 types of shamanic medicines. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the most part, it's the energy field that's created when one is not on an, in an altered state that is necessary yeah. to heal the trauma in a permanent way. So one feels safe that this is reality. It's the bedrock. It's not just a momentary uh, glimpse of, of a, a sense of safety. Mm -hmm. And then when one is in a, a, a situation and a community in which people are loving and cheerful and friendly and uh, following the Dharma, then one begins to feel at home in the world again and one lets go of those traumas. But let me add that today nearly everyone is traumatized. Right. Nearly everyone has a, a childhood that was not sufficiently loving or attentive because of the situation. People have to work and 
couples break up uh, and all kinds of things happen so that the child does not get raised properly to have a healthily structured ego mm -hmm. that can be transcended mm -hmm. and they don't have a rite of passage uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, they are not encouraged to go on a vision quest but but to stay small or to become an accountant or you know right. do something for financial mm -hmm. security not for spiritual growth so they're, they're, and people don't get rid of their trauma and they become embedded and become part of their identity. Mm -hmm. But nearly everyone is a walking wounded today. Yeah. And what role does trauma play into the calcification of this ego state, like this postmodern ego we're talking about? Yeah, it distorts the ego. It makes it more defensive, more paranoid, more aggressive, right. and, and creates much worse uh, conditions in which spirituality can't blossom. Right. And this is very important to Julianne and I. Um, with our, we have a one and a half year old son, Xavier, mm -hmm. um, and we're, you know, we don't know a lot about parenting, but we have a lot of intuitions and very passionate ideas about um, how to plant seeds in him that would be the most beneficial for him in the future. Is there advice based on your assessment of trauma and being involved so so pertinently in so many of society these days, this, in this day and age, and to us and to other parents like us? Is there, is there some advice or some some mm. just straight like <laughs> you know give us give us the goods <laughs> well it's very uh, complicated because at each age level different uh, conditions are required mm -hmm. Right now at his age, he, he requires what you're giving him, which is love and containment and attention and, and, and constant uh, sense of being protected and safe and uh, unconditionally loved and adored. Mm -hmm. That's what is needed. There will come a time in the terrible twos and threes that, that uh, the child will need to, to, to be able to be rebellious and, and need to break away and uh, uh, need to be also to learn discipline mm -hmm. and, uh, and the law. And, uh, and there will be a, a change of relationship uh, and you'll have to be able to adapt to what those needs are of a growing boy who's right. going to become a man and who will need uh, to have uh, that power of individuation. And so as, they, as uh, the child grows, uh, they will require more space and more freedom and uh, more ability to make their own decisions. But it all has to be done in an age-appropriate way. Mm -hmm. So it's a great art, and I couldn't give you a, in a <laughs> short uh, you know, moment the, all that you need to know. Of course. Because there's so much to know about uh, child psychology. Uh, that I have learned along the way mm -hmm. and, right. and the, the different levels of the development of our cognition, our critical thinking and right. all of that, that, that uh, if you insist upon it too soon, it will have a negative effect of resistance. But if you wait too long, then the curiosity won't develop. So you have to be very attentive to what the, the child is ready for mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and to encourage their curiosity to grow and to mm -hmm. develop and to... Uh, uh, break the boundaries and, and to keep becoming different from what they were and encourage their independence when they get to a certain age mm -hmm. so uh, so you don't hold on to them right, right. right. and so there is a there is a great uh, need for dispassion as well as compassion and, and love <laughs> and and to know that they are he is God's child he's not your child it's right? beautiful you are just temporary uh, chaperones <laughs> but the child belongs to the Lord. Right. Wow. But how do you raise a child in a time that we're in right now where, you know, when he becomes of age, to, he'll be able to look at the internet and to look at all of these dark forces that are yeah, around us? It's, it's very difficult. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I think for most people, bringing a child into the world today is not a blessing. So, uh, it, because of the kinds of things that are happening and the yeah. forced injection of babies, you know, yes, and, yeah. and babies being born to mothers who were, and mm. uh, the effects of that, and the effects of uh, a society coming apart, and financial bankruptcy, and food shortages. So, we understand this is you would have it's, to be in very special conditions like you are in, even mm -hmm. uh, to, to have a sense that this is something that you can deal with in a beautiful, godly way. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, you can, but you're going to have to be very protective uh, because of the, the nature of the, um, the, the negative vibrations mm -hmm. in the world and the, the type of uh, uh, lawlessness yeah. that, that is yes. current. 
So uh, th this is a longer conversation course, to talk course, about, yeah. and uh, and I think that that you will have to really have a, a kind of detachment a, as well as love, and accept that everything is in the hands of God, and and, and it's not on your shoulders, so that you you you, uh, you don't take it on as a burden, mm. and you're able to. Uh, to be in a, in a carefree state and and communicate that, so you don't you don't create a a sense of fear in the child because mm -hmm. of your fear for the child, right. right? Right. But you have to be prudent and you have to be careful. Wow. But it's a it, you're walking a, a fine a, line. A, a that's thin really, line. That's you know? really interesting. I think we've seen it as a balance so far, and, and doing our best to and and to bring him out of all that which you know, in Western society um, can place such a heavy burden on, on his development. Um, even just, you know, the screen culture, the distraction culture, the fear culture, like everything. So, you know, we had Xavier in here in Costa Rica for the reasons of just yeah. like... The uh, conscious I, birthing. The conscious birthing That's aspect wonderful. of it. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think the idea of nature, I think it's been mm -hmm. sort of a constant in a lot of our podcasts so far... Nature seems to be a very common thread for the driver of people back to their source. Yes. Um, and so back to their souls, maybe but, too, now that we're learning. Right? And I think yeah. so to well, us. That's why we've created this community, because the culture out there I don't think is conducive yeah. to mm -hmm. children. So we've created a spiritual community that we want eventually to, even now, to start inviting people mm -hmm. with families, with children mm -hmm. uh, to, to join us. Or to uh, we, we're glad to help other communities to learn from what we have learned the hard way. If mm -hmm. you wanted to start one somewhere else, uh, mm -hmm. that we would support you. We would like to create a network of spiritual oh, wow. communities communities where it's safe to raise children spiritually. That's amazing. That's a, a little dream garden of, of Garden of Eden, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like just creating the space that you guys are creating here in the ashram. It truly feels like it. You know, even today when we had the tour, many times I felt like I told, I told Mark, I'm like, I feel like I'm in a dream. Mm -hmm. Like there was just like this yeah. energy. I felt like mm -hmm. I was dreaming this, that I'm not actually here. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm in heaven somewhere, which was, it's a very interesting feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it says a lot about the energy that's mm -hmm. being created here by the community that you yes. guys have created. Um, and, you know, just based on our conversation today, feeling like, oh my gosh, there's something, you know, like you're saying, there's going to be a big destruction here. Yeah. So creating communities like this. Yes is going to be our way of Yes, and some will survive the, the destruction mm -hmm. uh, and be the, the ones who are the pioneers who bring about the new world. Mm -hmm. So it is important to have communities, uh, especially in a place like Costa Rica, mm -hmm. which is not going to be in the war zone directly. There's no, uh, mm -hmm. no military and no, no yeah. oil here. There's no reason to <laughs> bomb or invade or anything. So there are a few places in the world that will uh, survive that uh, mm -hmm. shockwave. But uh, it, it is important now to uh, be able to create those mm -hmm. conditions quickly before things get so bad that people can't even travel here or uh, be able mm -hmm. to have food. That's why we're growing our own food, you That's see. Amazing. That's amazing. I think doing, that will yeah. be necessary very shortly. Wow. So you really think this is going to happen very soon? You can see it exponentially increasing. Yeah. It, you can see the uh, escalation of the Ukraine war that's yeah. threatening to already to spill over into right. Lithuania, Poland, mm -hmm. Transnistria, right, all over. Uh, and you see it with China, with Taiwan, right? And you see a threat of a war with Iran, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all of these, they're, they're all going to go off simultaneously mm -hmm. at a certain point. And, and it will become global and it will escalate to the ultimate level mm -hmm. because they, they have to. They have nothing short of that, and that's the goal. You see, because they weren't able to succeed in injecting enough people. Mm -hmm. Mm. So they, they then they went to the food shortage thing, but they they, they weren't able to create the famine enough. Uh, so so the only way now that that cabal will survive is through the nukes, and that's why that's their final plan, their fallback plan, and they have the underground cities ready and and. Uh, uh, it seems like they have decided on that, and that's what's being escalated now, and it's happening rapidly. And the fact that most people can't 
or won't allow themselves to comprehend this kind of discussion. Like there'll be emotional reactions. Um, there'll of course. be, of course, like triggers, all kinds of stuff. Um, that zo- like the zombification of people. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Is there like, can you really not help those who do not want to be helped? You can help vibrationally, mm-hmm. and we there is what uh, Sheldrake discovered a morphogenetic field. We are all connected uh, mm-hmm. in, in one single noetic field, even though we don't consciously get the messages, but we will get them in dreams, and we will get mm-hmm. them in karmic events and synchronicities and that kind of thing. So yes, any time you reach that coherent soul level, your vibrations are disseminated throughout the planetary noetic field, and everyone is touched by it even if they're not consciously. And when enough of us get there to that vibrational level, then the, um, the message is coherent and is powerful, and people will receive the light. Every soul will receive it. That's beautiful. What yeah. is the light? Oh, that's God's light, divine light. Yeah. Everything is light. This whole world is made of light. What you think of as matter is just frozen light. It's all light. The quantum wave function that, that gets collapsed into making the world look like it's got material objects, it's, it's just light. Probability waves that are made of divine light, that's all the universe is. It's that love too as well. It, the light is love. It's light God's love. love in action. It's mm-hmm. the emanation of God's love light that mm-hmm. creates a world. And that the world will turn back to light. That's what everything will turn mm-hmm. into, because it is that. And then the light will reform as a beautiful world, very simply, very quickly. Right. So how do people embody that light right now? We are that light already. We just have to know it and accept it. <laughs> so self-realization. We have to get rid of the ego that creates the collapse of our quantum wave function. Mm-hmm. When that is gone, then our light body becomes more visible and more mm-hmm. clear to us. And then gradually uh, the, we get the power to eliminate even the physical body. You know, in Tibet, the, uh, the great lamas uh, go through a process called the rainbow body, where uh, when they're about to die, to leave the body, they, uh, they cause the body to simply disappear. All that is there is fingernails and rainbows that appear all around the hut where the person was meditating. Wow. And it's a very famous phenomenon. And it's like a message that, yes, goodbye and there's no body left to bury or anything. And it, this has also happened to Christian saints uh, over the years, and it, it happens uh, among sages in many traditions. So this is what's going to happen to all of us. The whole wow. world will become just a rainbow of divine light, and then a new world will mm-hmm. form. Wow. And that's where hope lies, maybe. Yeah. Indeed. Right? Yes. Yeah. I think that's important because I think when you can focus so easily on the negative... Like and the darkness, um, and people really like this duality, like the good and the bad. But I think rising above that, it's something I've heard you speak of in your teachings to to come above duality to yes, find the right. singular. Yes. Can you speak to the duality a little bit to help people understand the labels mm-hmm. we put on things and and how? Mm-hmm. Okay, everything is also its opposite. You know, and they they talk about the unification of the pairs of opposites. Ultimately, there is no evil, and and uh, and the good and the evil are ultimately one. Uh, the the noumenal and the phenomenal are one. The Buddhists say samsara and nirvana are one. Right? Non-duality is the truth. But the world is the externalization, the projection of God's energy, which is non-dual. It's a single intelligence, a single ineffable reality of of pure mind that gets uh, projected because of the emanation of divine light, like a pulse that goes out and forms the universe. And then the pulse returns back into the light, into the source. And that's what's happening now. Our pulse is now returning, the pulse of God. It's like systole, diastole, heartbeat. But uh, when God's uh, energy, when God calls it back, then the world disappears and, and only the light remains. 
and then a new pulse which creates a new world. And we've gone through this many, many times, infinite number of times. <laughs> All of the Hindu teachings are, are about mm -hmm. that. Brahma opens his eyes and there's a world, closes his eyes and the world <laughs> disappears, right? It's in the mythology. Uh, and so uh, this is well known. And, and uh, those who turn to the ancient texts will recognize the truth of it. Even the Christian texts, like the Book of Revelations, it's all about this time period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and we, we see equivalence in all of the religious traditions. So it's known, but because people have become atheistic and cynical and non-believers, they don't want to accept this. Because they become identified with body instead of soul and spirit, mm -hmm. they, 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 uh, they're in a denial of death. But death, death and life are non-dual. Mm -hmm. We are dead right now. Because God is death. God is the absence of the material. God is transcendent. <laughs> That's what death is, is eternal life. But we don't know that mm -hmm. from the ego level. And, and so we are, because we are souls and we are pure spirit, we are dead as well as alive. And if we can get into the non-duality of that and be dead while alive, which is what Jivan Mukti is, uh, that is the fearless state uh, of being an avatar. And so that's what is our destiny, if we choose it. <laughs> wow. And when you use the word avatar, can you explain that a it little bit? It means that the, the divine energy, the divine intelligence, the divine light has descended into your body and is now being transmitted into the matrix, into this mm. phenomenal realm. Right. Wow, that's powerful. <laughs> that's amazing. Wow. So you're both on the path to <laughs> this liberated state of becoming yeah. avatars, yeah. which is why it's a great joy to be with you both. Oh. Thank you. I mean, I think one of the last things I would, I would love, again, to, to just bring to the people that are listening to this, in all of this conversation, it's all about how can we be love? How can we be connected to that God's consciousness? So maybe you could just share a lot, you know, one last words of wisdom, you know, how can people right now in their everyday situations going through this and that and facing destruction and famine and all of the things that are facing us, how can they become love and light? Mm -hmm. Well, our true nature is love and light. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is remember, I'm not the body and I'm not the, the, the thoughts that occur in the body consciousness and uh, withdraw inward, go into your heart, mm -hmm. go into your core, and you'll feel the presence of that divine light and love. It's there, it never leaves. Y you leave it by externalizing your consciousness into uh, identification with body, but realize you're not the body, and you are eternal. You were never born, and you will not die. If you will really sit with that thought deeply and meditate on it, there will be an awakening. There will be a, a, a perceiving of that light. And then the heart will open, and you'll feel the bliss of divine love, and, and it will emanate out. And once you feel the, the joy of the truth of who you really are and what you are, you won't want to come back into the illusion again. And then you'll be able to live, even with all of the horrors that are happening mm -hmm. and the difficulties of mm -hmm. life, uh, realizing it's God's dream and it's all perfect and nothing will affect you. And you'll be able to bring peace into the hearts of others who are anxious and suffering. And that's really our dharma. That's right. our mission. That's our duty. That's, that's beautiful. Because once you realize it's an illusion, then there's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's, I think, the pearl of wisdom that can help liberate so many people from this trance. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's like, that's so special because it, it's just so crippling, you know, yes. like people I am so close to are mm -hmm. just so like, um, yeah, so I guess crippled by it all, by but just like completely like taken over. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's why, you know, we're constantly leaning into this idea of what can people do mm -hmm. and, and, I think because people are searching for it. Mm -hmm. but the awakening that, is, yeah. people want it. They have to it. awaken and yeah. transcend the ego. Yeah. Right. Within the ego, you cannot uh, change your consciousness. You cannot will it. Mm -hmm. But if you transcend the ego into your soul, it's there spontaneously. Yeah. You don't have to do any effort. Because mm -hmm. that is who we are. Yeah. That's it's beautiful. Reminding ourselves of our 
God consciousness, yes. like you mentioned, that's yes. always there within us. Yes. And we've just fallen asleep to it. Yes. And we have to wake up. That's um, it. It's well, thank you. It. Awakening, thank you. illumination, and liberation. Yes. That's the path. Oh, and that's our destiny. And I like that you focus on making the choice. We talk mm -hmm. like our, the mantra for Boho Beautiful has always been like, your decisions today will define your tomorrow. And mm -hmm. to me, when I hear about creation and fall and redemption, yes. and that moment, as Juliana is speaking, of like the dark night of the soul, there's yes. that moment of choice yes. to mm -hmm. choose which way you want to go. Yes. And I think like... To we all have a choice. That we all have a yes. choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... and yes because it's an illusion there's nothing to fear so making the choice that you know that's right in your heart frees you of the guilt of knowing you're not and frees you to be able to become in the potentiality that i think we all truly we all have it oh yeah because we're all the same thing yes like that's so beautiful to me and because of our our political and social freedoms are being taken away the only freedom we have left really is the freedom of will to choose god and to choose <laughs> our highest consciousness. And that will save us. It's enough. Yeah. Wow. And they can't take that away from us. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you both. Oh my this goodness. Has been just an honor, a pleasure, so enlightening. And wow. Thank it's you. Mutual. You're always welcome back. Oh and if there's is any way I or the community can serve you on your yeah. path, we'll be happy well, to thank help. You. And likewise, yeah. like an open door for mm -hmm. anything we can Wonderful. do as well. For us, just knowing that you guys are here so close mm -hmm. to where we are in Costa Rica mm -hmm. is a blessing because it's just like we said, the energy that is coming from this beautiful place, the sanctuary is... Mm -hmm. Uh, calls us home <laughs> you know we're like wow <laughs> yeah, so beautiful you're always here. welcome to Thank stop you. by and i hope we stay connected yes, and, and you connect with uh, the whole yeah. community yes, well, we hope this you. is the first of many yeah i really <laughs> really do yes Thank amazing so much. we hope you guys enjoyed this incredible episode today don't forget to click that follow button subscribe button and check out the sat yoga institute on youtube mm -hmm. if anything or everything that shunyamurti said speaks to your heart yes we'll also include all the links in the bottom of the description and show notes to this episode for you to learn all about sat yoga and the sat yoga institute as well follow and subscribe and there's more episodes coming every single week all our love thank you <laughs>